Hi, I'm Angela. Join me as we open doors globally and explore life's fabric. Welcome to Life's Fabric, where doors are open globally, sharing ideas, culture, and lifestyles. I wanted to know if people thought education could create a better world, a world with more tolerance for cultural differences, a world that might have less conflict due to an increased understanding of needs. So I headed off to Africa and interviewed five people who shared their thoughts on three questions about education. And here's the first. Sure, it's imparting of knowledge. It is easy for people to get education, but how to use that, that education, it might be uh, uh, that, is, uh, that, that, that people they are going to use their education in negative way. They say teachers change the world. That's why we're here. One of the reasons why we can, uh, the way we can help these children is through interaction. And in the U.S., well, you have this ideal of capitalism mm -hmm. and the thing is is that capitalism doesn't give meaning for young people's lives. I think education will be uh, a very strong weapon that to to make the societies from one country to the other as one. Uh, for instance many countries they get in, in big uh, problem because those people who are in the government they don't use uh, their natural resources in a sustainable way. Uh, other people also they don't want to release uh, the regime. I think education uh, will help uh, these guys to understand what is democrat, uh, democracy. I think through education you learn more about different cultures and you realize that what we do may impact another country or another culture. Everyone interviewed believes that education can help reduce global conflicts. Yet Christina is careful not to take on a utopian perspective. It's too big a, uh, an agenda for a school system. You know, it has to be the involvement of entire communities. Education is a platform for our evolution but it may not be the answer to solve all of our problems. I wanted to go even deeper and learn their thoughts on the current educational system. Those days we had cultural activities. We had circumcision of girls. We had early marriages. We had the uh, killing of albinos. So, through globalization, it has really helped to remove these cultural activities. Well, I think the children that I deal with in Tyride are, are very isolated from the real world, and this trip to Africa has totally opened my eyes, and I would like to bring. They, they have very little awareness of what the real world is like, and I feel like my goal from this trip is to come back and share my experiences with the kids. So many people that lack so much and yet they're a very joyous, happy people and they've been so welcoming to us that it's really touched my heart. Wonderful. Because we have for maybe an informal, that is informal education, but the education someone gets, starting from the family, that will be better than, because it is a foundation. If you wait too long in education to to give input as a parent, it might just be too late. You know, when people have gone through an entire school system without much intercultural exchange, uh, well, they come to a place like Tanzania as young adults, and they, they don't have the eyes to see 
mm -hmm. a different school system. So all they see is uh, poverty, broken windows in the classrooms. All they see are the problems rather than uh, the possibility for for understanding. A very strong bridge uh, among the societies because some societies still they believe that uh, their tradition and the culture is very important than education. Uh, people from abroad uh, they try to open hearts of uh, African societies to, to, to get them in a good education. Home involvement tops the list of what's missing in education. Young children are often sheltered from the whole world and instead taught only about their local world kind of like global segregation. Lastly, I was curious to know if they had any hope for the future. Perfect. Most likely right now, uh, we didn't know that Obama could be a president of USA. So, through education, we can make the world to reach very far. So, it must be an uh, interaction of both education. Now there is changes you know, all over the world. So how can we going to, uh, to go with these changes? Uh, we are going to look as a family or as a society. Uh, I will going to make sure that uh, when the children they go to school, they will be back then to their tribe and they sit with their tribe. What do you got from, the, uh, from your education? Then exchanging the knowledge with their elders, with the ladies, with their uh, uh, children, boys and girls. Uh, the, the world will be a very good place to live uh, because people they live in a harmony. Uh, people they respect uh, each other from one country to the other. Education is very important all over the world. Try to make effort, uh, doing everything uh, possible. Uh, to make sure that uh, every kid is uh, getting education. And, uh, for instance, there's a tribe, local tribe, Maasai, that uh, they are nomads. So the government tries to build schools nearby so that their kids are uh, starting at least primary studies, which is very important for the beginning of their life. Each culture or subculture will educate its children in what it feels are the important values. And, and so they, you, you can't have a, a standard of education across the world because there are different cultures that they're growing into. And so what's needed in the U.S. Cult, home culture is not what a Tanzanian young person needs to know to survive in their home society. I, th I think that through education people begin to realize that we're in this together and that we need to work together and support each other. Hope leaves her mark on these five guests. They see the role of education playing a part in a better understanding of each other. If we can't rely on the same home involvement, we could rely on a basic agreed upon level of education globally. In North America, Alaska, the UAE, Italy, and parts of Europe, standard education runs until the age of 18. Mandatory schooling until the age of 16 to 17 is the norm for Brazil, Chile, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. In parts of Asia, Europe, and Africa, standard education ends between the ages of 12 and 14. And many countries in Africa don't even report statistics on school-age children. So how can we communicate and understand each other's needs if we're operating on different levels of education. In parts of the Middle East, like Iraq, 39% of the rural population is illiterate, and 22% of the adult population have never attended school. Overall, about 25% of school-aged children 
Do not attend school whatsoever. Let me ask you something, Rachel. Yeah, you can ask me. What do you think about education? Will it help you? Tell me about images it. is what it's all about. What are you out to have happen? What are you out to have happen to a particular person? What are you out to have happen in the broader context? And if you focus there, then I think you can get to where you need to go. Oh, sadly, radically, radically, and who knows ultimately how, but we're just so sidetracked. You think of the social process, you think of the economic dimension that you're preparing people for, you think of the political dimension of life, you think of the cultural dimension, which must never be neglected. As it Send them away from where they are now. Mm -hmm. I grew up in West Texas, so for me, you know, send me out of Texas. Send me to to Africa. Right. Or, or, or later on, send me to Australia. And that has a dramatic impact on the mind. So you can do the send me through technology, mm. though it's not the same. Mm -hmm. I grew up in the country. I didn't think of myself as being able to go global, but circumstance gave me that opportunity. My children, uh, a boy and a girl, are they were born global citizens. One, one is back and forth between California and Thailand and, and uh, Arizona. The other one it happens to be in D.C. now. He works for the World Bank, and uh, he's uh, chief executive officer for community outreach. I have friends of mine, three ladies from USA. They are here in Tanzania now. Uh, yesterday we went in a village, Maasai village. They tried to teach, to teach them uh, the way people living in other side of the world. And uh, those Maasai people, they were happy because uh, it's like uh, one step ahead. Uh, we were playing with them uh, baseball. Uh, it was one uh, team between ladies and gentlemen in, a, in, a, in that Maasai village. So I really um, congratulating them uh, to have that uh, kind of heart so that other people, they can, um, uh, it's a good example for other people to do it. When global education becomes the norm for every child, regardless of sex, religion, cultural background, or financial ability, it just might allow nations, cultures, and individuals to come to the table of negotiation with clearer communication and respect for differences and a broader understanding of global issues. Let's hope we get it right for our future generations. Bye for now. See you next episode.